So today, where, as we said um, last night, we're having a slightly different rhythm for the day. Um, uh, today we're drawing on the section in Living with Kindness, which is the sort of culmination of Metta. So out of uh, the sort of conditions we've set up and the practice that we've done, sort of including all beings, the culmination is that our Metta can meet whatever arises and whatever arises, we can meet it with the appropriate response. So this morning we're going to do a, a couple of meditations. I'm going to um, lead us through a metal practice, which I'll talk about in a minute. And Sadhanandi will um, lead us through uh, a, an Ipeksha Bhavna, or something else. No, no. No, yes, that's right. But we'll lead us through a metal practice in a different way. So you, you, you get a bit of a sense of different ways into the practice. Um, but before we do that, um, we, we did um, have some questions um, that came out of people's practice. Now, we had quite a lot of questions, so we're not going to answer all of them this morning, but we'll just uh, pick up on a couple of them and we'll maybe do a couple more tomorrow morning. Um, we've really picked out sort of questions that might have a bit of a general application. And of course, anything we say, because we're not in one-to-one -one dialogue with somebody, they are, it's a general comment. And that individually, we might need a bit more specific um, advice and guidance, but we can just, just say a few things. So um, one of the first questions that, um, that we were asked about was um, dealing with um, a very busy, um, distracted mind, a mind that was just full of thoughts, and some of those thoughts being quite negative. So um, Sadhanandi and I had a bit of a chat about that this morning, and we've both got sort of different ways in to how one might work with this. So um, Sadhanandi, I don't know if you wanted to go first, or how we do it? Yep. Michelle, should I just say? Mm -hmm. So, 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 so um, my, my response to this question is that, um, as we know, uh, you, you can't get rid of thoughts, like thinking happens, and it happens regardless of whether we want it or not. So um, in a way, we've got to um, resist any temptation to try and um, get rid of the thoughts or um, it, you know, deal with them in a sort of way where you're trying to think you can clear your mind. We, we, we all know now that's impossible to do. So um, one of the, the practices that I've taken on quite assiduously with thoughts is um, with this awareness that you can't get rid of thoughts, um, I actually, you, you've got to try and sort of harness your ability to think and harness your ability to, um, uh, the ability we have and which does get stronger over time when we meditate is to be able to direct our thoughts where we want them to be. So one of the suggestions I would say with a lot of thinking is try not to worry about the content. If the content's trying to drag you in emotionally and getting you caught up with something. So my suggestion is try not to do that, but try to harness your thoughts into um, reflecting on your meditation. So use thinking for your meditation. So if you're having a lot of thoughts, you know, you know, okay, my mind's busy, Doing what I'm doing is not calming it down. So bringing in thinking, okay, so what's actually going on in my meditation? Where's my breath? Where am I feeling my breath in my body? Where's, is there any tension in my body? Okay, what is it, um, what am I actually trying to do in this meditation? Am I cultivating metta? What would be a way in for me? So harnessing your thoughts to engage with what's actually in your experience. And of course, we know Persistent habitual thinking, which um, is, is, is come out of a mind that we've created outside of meditation. So if we're creating a mind outside of meditation that's really busy and really thinking and we, you know, our mind just keeps going off in all directions, that is the mind we're going to see in meditation. When we sit down, we're just getting a reflection of our habitual patterns, if you like. And um, so we're trying to harness those passion, those passions. They are they are passions, really, aren't they? Thinking can be quite a passion. We're trying to harness that thinking and start directing it. So we become the driver, 
of our own boss, if you like. And it's what we do from the beginning when we very first start meditation. It's the skill that we learn to, um, it's the same as when you're doing a mindfulness of breathing and your mind wanders off and you bring it back to your breath. It's the same skill that we're trying to learn in all situations when our mind is just going off doing its own thing. So um, I would say with really persistent negative thoughts, trying to get your thinking, thinking about what's going on in your body, how is your breathing, um, is there anything you can do to ground yourself? And just ask yourself those questions. That's you becoming the driver of your experience. Let me just turn my, let me mute. Okay, uh, and I'm following on from what um, Shubhiyua said. You just get interested in your, your thoughts, if there's a lot of them. Uh, you can think of them as um, something that's telling you a story. This is, I quite enjoy this. So find out what are, the, um, what are the emotions that are going on underneath them. So anxiety or um, anger, um, just noticing what is the emotional sort of tone to those thoughts, self-hatred, um, persistent worry about something that's maybe outside your control. Uh, so you, all you need to do then is just tune in more with the emotions and then actually what you're doing in your meditation is you're trying to address the emotions rather than the, like the viewer says, that, that so much the story or the content. So that's one thing. And the other thing is um, they can be telling you that you need to do something uh, or you need to acknowledge something. I uh, don't know how to give you an example of this, but um, sometimes we have a conversation with another person in in the few days leading up to, to a meditation and we're going over and over that conversation, maybe quite obsessively. What And what are you trying to live out? Are you trying to live out some unexpressed emotion? Are you trying to receive appreciation which you didn't receive in the moment? Just find out what is, um, what are you trying to address by these obsessive thoughts, but you're not making them very conscious. So uh, you're not really getting the message. And sometimes they can be telling us that we want to do something else. And what we're trying to, well, what I'm trying to do all the time is not create too much conflict between myself and trying to meditate. You know, I don't want it to become like a battleground in my own head about what I'm supposed to be doing and um, uh, what I am doing. So how do you not have a battleground going on? And, uh, I listen, sometimes I listen. If I'm having fantasies about lying outside in the sunshine, um, drinking a cup of tea, you know, all that, uh, I think, okay, so what do I really, really want? And what I really want is a bit of ease, or I really, really want a holiday. Um, there was this uh, lady, this older lady that lived at Taraloka called Vajagita, and she used to say to me, if your thoughts are telling you that you need to have a holiday, just give yourself a holiday in your meditation. And what does it feel like to, well, what does it look like for you to just give yourself a moment of ease in your meditation or a holiday, just take a holiday? Um, so, it's, so it's using your thoughts to tell you something a bit more about yourself. I mean, another thing can be that it's just uh, your psyche doesn't want you to go somewhere, it doesn't want you to acknowledge something more more psychological, and it's throwing up a lot of um, just um, well distraction. Let's call it that. And uh, you need to just acknowledge, if you can, is there something behind all of that that I just don't want to touch in on? Maybe there's a complicated um, relationship you've got, or that, you know, whatever it is. I won't try and second guess. And um, and then can you just bring that a little bit into consciousness? I mean, generally, what we need to face in ourselves is not as loud or as big as the thing that's the noise that all the distractions are creating. Yeah, generally, it's manageable. So, yeah. Okay, I think that's all I need to say. Yep. Okay. okay.